As we discussed, one of the main advantages of CBSEM, from now onwards, I will just say SEM. So when I say SEM, I mean CBSEM. So one of the main advantages of SEM is that you can test the model as a whole, right? And to do so, we need a, a model fit index, right? So the model fit index that we use here is goodness of fit chi-square. This is the main model fit, model fit index that we use in um, SEM. Um, or uh, uh, we call it goodness of fit chi-square. So we, it's shown like um, chi-square um, GOF means goodness of fit. And um, so goodness of fit chi-square looks at the model as a whole, not just single relationships. We want to see whether the whole model is a good model or not. So you as the researcher, first you need to test whether the model fit is good or not. This means you accept or reject the whole model. So uh, we don't test the relationship, we don't test the hypothesis before making sure that this is a good model. The model that you have developed in your lab is a good model. So what do we mean by uh, model fit and good model? Let me give you an example. Suppose that this is a bridge in the real world, right? So you may have something like this in your um, city or country. Here in Malaysia, we have a bridge like this in Putrajaya. So it's a huge bridge, right? The bridge that we have here in Putrajaya is a huge bridge. It's very similar to what you can see here. And um, suppose we want to do some tests to see how strong this bridge is, right? For example, if there is a storm, uh, we want to see whether um, the, uh, what's called, the bridge will survive or not. So can we take this bridge to remove it and then take it to the i mean um, yeah take it from putrajaya and put it in our lab and put it in a wind tunnel to test it of course not it's a huge bridge right i cannot take it from there i cannot move it right it's already there so what we do in uh, the real world is we in our lab we make a model similar to the real world model so i go to my lab and make a smaller scale model similar to the real world model and then i put that small scale model in the wind tunnel or do whatever test i want to see uh, whether you know to, to to assess its strength in this in a storm let's say right and then i generalize my findings to the real world model right so uh, here in my lab, suppose that my research assistants, they have made three smaller scale models. And this is model A, model B, and model C. Let's have a look at model C. You see, model C is not really similar to what we have in the real world. In the real world, it's not really similar to the bridge that we have in Putrajaya. Putrajaya is the name of a city here. Uh, so if i put this in the wind tunnel or do any test in my lab i don't think really with a high confidence level i can generalize the findings to the real world model right uh, or here as you can see it's similar but still not the same right so uh, um, to some extent you know uh, i may be able to generalize but not um, very accurately uh, and here we have a good fit model as you can see this is very similar to the real world model but in a smaller scale right so i put this in a wind tunnel and do some tests and because it's very similar to the real world model i generalize the findings to the real world case so this is exactly what we have in social sciences and in modeling so by model fit uh, we mean the model that we develop in our lab by lab in social science means um, on a piece of paper you draw a model right so you uh, develop a model based on theory literature blah 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 and this is your uh, proposed model is that your theoretical model right so here you can see for example three theoretical models developed in your lab and we want to see to what extent the, th the model that we have developed based on theory in our lab is similar to the real world model i name it observed models so observed models 
they represent, they are actually what we have in the population. For example, you want to do some tests on quality of life of cancer patients, right? So the quality of life of cancer patients is something uh, in the real world, right? I mean, people, some cancer patients, it's about and their quality of life and the factors impact their quality of life. So there are some, you know, uh, the nexus of relation, there are some relationships between the factors in the real world. Now I want to identify a pattern or I want to test the relationships between those, those factors, right? So what I do is, uh, in my lab, based on the literature, I develop a model, a theoretical model, and do the test by sampling, do a test on that model, and then I generalize the, fi generalize the findings to the population, right? So, what is important, what uh, is the most important thing here? How similar the model that you develop in your lab, on a piece of paper you draw a model, is similar to the real world model. And this is called a model fit. So when we say model fit means uh, how similar these two models are, right? So here we have a good fit, here is moderate fit, and here poor fit, right? So when it's poor fit, I don't think we need, we should test the hypothesis because even if you find any positive significant relationship, I don't, I don't think we can generalize it to the real world model. So the results that you get on your model in your lab, not necessarily um, can explain what the phenomena in the real world, right? So here is a good fit. This means that I can generalize the findings with a high confidence level to the real world model, right? So, and the, the results can be used, right? So the first step is to see whether the model has a good fit. And goodness of fit chi-square is a measure that is used for this purpose. So. The goodness of fit chi-square measures the difference between these two models. So when the, the two models are very similar, this means the goodness of uh, the chi-square, goodness of fit chi-square, is very small, right? So in this case, in this example, uh, for model A, the uh, chi-square is very small, and here for model C, it's very big. So we prefer smaller, we prefer smaller chi-squares, means we prefer non-significant chi-squares. So this is one of the few cases that we prefer non-significant results. Usually researchers are interested in significant results. They want to show the, um, the intervention was effective, the medicine was uh, effective, or uh, they found something, right? So we usually go for Significant, we are interested in significant results, but there are some tests, statistical tests, that the researchers are interested in non-significant results. For example, normality tests and blah, blah. But here uh, is one of the, those examples that we prefer, we, we prefer non-significant results because non-significant results means the chi-square is small and this means that the difference between these two models is very small. This means what if you do a test here on the model developed in the lab, the results will be similar to the results you will get in the real world model. And non-significant means p-value greater than, larger than 0.05. For significant results, this means that p-value is less than 0.05. And here is opposite. We prefer larger p-values, right? Why? Because chi-square tests the difference between our observed model and the hypothesized model. So this is the hypothesized model, or I just mentioned theoretical model, right? So the hypothesized model or theoretical model is the one that you develop, and here is the observed model. We prefer, they, we want a, a hypothesized or theoretical model that is similar to the real world model. So we prefer lower chi, smaller chi-square and non-significant chi-square. In other words, we do not want to reject the null hypothesis, right? What is the null hypothesis for the chi-square test? The null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the observed model and the hypothesized model or theoretical model, right? So uh, there is no significant difference between these two models. This is the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is there is a significant difference between these two. So if your p-value is less than 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis, and this means there is a significant difference between these two, and this is not what we want. 
So for this case, for model fit, we prefer non-significant uh, differences. This means we do not want to reject the null hypothesis. This is one of the few cases, few tests that we do not want to uh, reject the null hypothesis. So if the results of model testing is good, this means that the model fit is good, and then we can test the model. However, there is an issue. So I spend a lot of time explaining the importance of uh, goodness of fit chi-square. However, there are some problems as well. Uh, the issue is the sample size effect. Uh, if you have large sample size, right? If you have large sample size, even small differences between the two models, the observed and hypothesized model, will be significant, right? So, even if there is a very small difference between these two models, right? For example, this part maybe is a bit different. So, they are very similar, but small differences. If you have large sample size, it will be significant. Means, the um, chi-square results will show these two models are different. Although they are almost the same, but because your sample size is very large, even if you have a few hundred cases, then the chi-square will be significant. So the issue is, if you have a few hundred cases, the chi-square automatically will be significant. And this means the results show that there is a significant difference between these two, although they may not be really a big difference. And when your sample size is very small, right when your sample size is very small the big differences between the two models observed and hypothesized model won't be detected by chi-square so there are some sensitivity issues right for example here in this model you see the model b and the real world model if your sample size is not that big the results the chi-square will be non-significant and uh, you cannot you won't reject the the results won't reject the hypothesis null hypothesis this means that the results show this is a good model, but the reason, but actually the model is not that good because the sample size was small. You couldn't identify the difference. So this is the issue of, so this limits the use of chi-square uh, goodness of fit. And this is the reason that we have many other indexes developed to uh, assess the model fit. So we use several model fit indexes to decide whether the model fit is good or not right but we always report uh, goodness of fit chi-square even if it even if it shows the model fit is not good because it's still used to compare models right so let me share something with you um, in most of the studies in most of the studies goodness of fit chi-square results show that your model fit is not good so we don't make decision based on goodness of we don't reject a model just based on goodness of fit chi-square and we refer to many other indexes that have been developed and uh, then we accept or reject the uh, hypothesized or theoretical model that we have developed in the lab. Uh, so later I will show you different indexes that can be used to assess the model fit.